All right, we're back for round two of Modern Mondays at Guardian Games. We have two of my absolute favorite decks in all of Modern. Can oh, really? <laughs> what they <laughs> are. Two, both of them are your favorite oh, decks? Oh, yeah. We uh, have Amulet Titan on the left, Justin Pinnell, and Blair Busby playing Jeskai Breach. Uh, I didn't realize that you were also a Breach fan. Oh, yeah. Huge, that's, huge That's in the repertoire? Fan. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, hardly in the repertoire, but absolutely <laughs> beloved. Yes. Uh, I'm excited for me to try and figure out the Titan lines, and then you can correct me <laughs> about like, like the 10 other better Titan lines that oh. uh, we could have been taking. I love being a backseat <laughs> Titan driver. Oh, it's the best. I mm. imagine it's the same as people who are re religiously Storm players and watching someone else yeah. play Storm, and they're like, ah, oh, they could have taken, they could have done this with two less cards or whatever. <laughs> Well, the best part is that I'm extremely out of touch when it comes to Titan, too. <laughs> so my lines would be like, well, I would definitely go for the uh, Sakura Tribe Scout line, sure, which has not yeah. been played. <laughs> Turns out our Boreal Grazer is better at blocking the monkey. <laughs> the monkey menace. Uh, and the beloved Tribe Scout has been put on the shelf. Kelsey Ron, uh, it has also been a while since Breach has shown its face at Guardian Games, but it's here. Yeah, Breach... Uh, just oh. absolutely cleaned up this weekend. Really um, interesting. Jesse, Jesse's oh, forgetting her last name, played it early on in the weekend for one of the big SCG events. I think won the 5K, and then Ross Merriam run ran back like the exact same list. Oh, Both wow. he and another grinder ran that same list, and I think they got first and third in the 20K. Dang. So Breach right. is really well positioned in the wider meta right now because. Um, Four color control. Uh, four color control is uh, not terribly well equipped to beat breach at the moment, and it's got great matchups elsewhere across the board. I mean, cheating big things in the play is usually pretty good. Oh, not that kind of breach. This is. Oh, is that what this is? I was oh. assuming this was the um, underworld breach. Oh, combo deck. that seems like a way better choice. When yeah, they said breach. I thought through the breach, and I thought, okay, that's a crazy deck to play. <laughs> it's got to be underworld breach. I would think so. Yeah. We'll find out in a second. As soon as these mulligans are resolved. Oh, Cisco. Uh, yeah, thank you for the. It's Corey. Corey Boomer breach. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. If if it is just guy like actual through the breach, that would be very exciting. But boy has that boy does that deck lose to a solitude. <laughs> Titan has lands. That's what that deck wants to do, mm -hmm. right? That's right. It's been a minute since Underworld Breach has shown its face as well, clearly, because I'm not even yeah, thinking about it. Yeah, when Force of Vigor, when a bunch of decks are playing Force of Vigor mm -hmm. and a ton of Graveyard Hate, it was a tough place to be. I mean, Ledger Shrenner was a pretty big printing for the deck because sure. it was so graveyard dependent before that, that Shredder allowing you to like loot away bad cards and matchups where your opponent has a graveyard covered and go for the beatdown plan is, is pretty nice. Take a look. Uh, I believe Blair. So Blair bobbled Justin there, which would indicate that Blair definitely has an important turn one play. Otherwise, we would bobble ourselves. Right, especially with the fetch land. Yep. I was and just gonna say sense. it's probably a monkey. So Justin's hoping that our boreal grazer is in hand here, but do we have the grazer? Yes, yeah. we do. All right, here we go. We're playing magic. Um, one nice thing for Amulet Titan in this matchup is that Jeskai Breach is not well equipped to play Blood Moon because it's relying on Urza Saga. So Justin will That's not true. really have to worry about any Blood Moons post-board. This is a little bit of just a race, though, right? Like, if, if Blair sets up their combo... Game like one, their engine, right? Then, like, they're just like done. They're just they win the game. Yep. Yeah. Game one yeah. is definitely definitely a race. Um, I think something that we'll we will see kind of how well Justin knows the matchup. Something that's heads up to do is if Justin gets a a decent board advantage, 
I would hope that we see uh, Justin grab the Bajuka Bog if it is main deck. And oh, we will find sure. out if Justin has a Bajuka Bog main deck because the Breach deck has a lot harder time going off um, if if the graveyard has been recently. Right, right, right. Yeah. Recently you, you have to get your, your, You have to have really good hits, right? Yes. Yeah. It uh, can, you can still do it with some hands, but... Odds that there are any D&T in the room tonight? Uh, I didn't see anyone I was walking around, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. The fact that Justin does not have an amulet here... Okay, so Justin will be able to cast a Titan next turn, but there is no amulet. So Titan will come down, and then we will have to see... Titan into Valakut could be actually very strong to just wipe out what Blair has. So if I'm on Blair's side, I am definitely, like we said earlier, trying to go fast, trying to get to the combo line because um, I think your board's going to get wiped pretty quickly. Yeah, and agree that discarding the breach is interesting, yep. um, but maybe also just like very aware that they're gonna next turn gonna forecast it and they have two breaches. So. Yeah, there's another breach in hand. Yeah. So. Um, Justin though holding on to uh, the Seiju. So. so all Blair needs is a grinding station at this point, and then the combo is available next turn. So while Justin may be able to decimate the board, as long as Blair is able to get a grinding station in the yard, we should be... Even through Besaju? No, we will not be good through Besaju. No, yeah, because they'll, they'll only get to cast one spell, right? And then mm -hmm. you Besaju. Yeah, yeah. Breach, yeah. I well, think, maybe I also think too, Blair might be stuck. I think Blair may not be able to get their mana wise either was the other thing I was looking at because oh. you need to be able to cast the grinding station for two and you need to be able to cast the breach for two. So you need at least four to be able to run both of those out and you'd need the Emery to stay in play or else you actually need five total because you need one additional. To so cast if you're the Justin, you're, ping you're pinging things. Right I now? think so, yeah. I think you just... Because you, your Titan's going to stay in play. And win yeah, you has, have a tremendous yeah. advantage here. Um, I think you just wipe Blair's board. Because I don't think you can kill Blair this turn. <laughs> Blair asking the important questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are the triggers going? Four triggers total. So you can wipe the board exactly here. And I think... Interesting. Okay, oh, this is such huge. a good play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, but because the triggers go on the stack and then the uh, enchantment pain in the butt guy is removed, the guy with the abs, uh, <laughs> those triggers fizzle. Correct. That's what's happening. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. So this is really, really good for Blair. I mean, we're still we're still not. Again, if Blair doesn't have the grinding station, then the combo is still potentially a little ways away. Um, however, when do you just cast Underworld Breach for some value? Not in this game, I don't think. Because you need it to you like. You, I mean, you, have you could. Combo. I guess okay. Iteration in the yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, have, okay, like, okay, okay. Consider in the yard. I, I take it back because you can get the Titan off the board here. You have Unholy Heat in the yard with Delirium. So yeah. I actually think it is very reasonable for Blair to go for a value line here with the Breach because you have to hope that uh, Justin does not have another Titan in hand. But if you don't have the combo right now, I think it's... <laughs> I mean, Spell Palm also gets Titan off the board in a very fun way. It does, but it, you're still allowing Justin to... Justin can replay it and still get lands. And I think may oh, you're right. even you're be able to trigger. get it and then get the Hanwar garrison and haste it next turn because I, uh, most of the time, a lot of the new lists are playing Hanwar garrison rather than Sunholm. Interesting. Um, because it works better with Valakits. Huh? Can we bring that up? Yes. Well, we def. I mean, either way, Titan player is attacking and getting land triggers, right? I mean, that's what the deck wants to do, especially in the face of a spell bomb. Maybe I meant to say Hanwar battlements. Battlements, yeah. One of them is a, a transform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, meant to say, I meant to say Hanwar battlements. Sure, it's not before attack, but in combat before attack, 
Yeah, it's like red and one and it gives something haste. Or Correct. Do you, yeah. It's just it's just red and tap it to give something haste. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, chat. I led you guys astray, but yeah. Hanwar Battlements. Interesting that that's a recent development, and uh, like not something that maybe was played around with before. Yeah, I mean, Sunhome giving the creature vigilance was and still is like a big deal sure. in a number of matchups. Um, and I, having not been part of the Titan community for a while, I don't really necessarily understand the exact reasoning behind this change, besides that you don't need the red and white, which can be difficult for the deck. Mm. And now that you're sure kind you of like, you're, you're no longer uh, playing things like Gemstone Mine yeah, that you yeah, used yeah, to yeah, play yeah, that yeah. kind of allowed you to get more colors. To cheat on mana more. Yeah, sure. This, yeah, I guess this way you can get a Valakut and this and give it haste, right? You don't right. have to get a double uh, whatever the, the Boros one is. Mm -hmm. uh, Boros Garrison. Ooh. I looked away for one second to look at that Hanweir card. So I would like, if Bajuka Bog is main deck, I think this is the you time that you for got sure. It. With Aether Spellbomb in the yard, too. Um, like. But again, this deck has not, Bajuka Bog has moved away from the main deck yeah. in more of these builds. So I think it's very possible that that is not, that that is not in the main deck for Justin. Yeah, Blair also unfortunately not being able to double spell uh, to start pumping up that shredder. Right. So also, I mean, that's a clock too. You don't have to. You don't have to underworld breach. <laughs> right. Intelligently kept the bobble up so that if there is a bog that happens, the bobble will still be able to um, be recurred by Emery. Yes. There we go. There is a second spell. And we have no mana floating. Hmm. Is that the case? Yeah, I think so. I think Vesuva copied a Valakut. Oh, maybe we had so one, one mana floating. must have had one floating, yeah. Yeah, so there is one land drop available that will trigger all three Valakits, as I believe the Vesuva is copying Valakit at the moment. It is, yeah. So if Blair does not have a removal spell, which the Jeskai Breach deck, that is one of the, the kind of like weaknesses of the deck, is you're not playing a ton of interaction. Like somewhere between three to four Unholy Heats and maybe a Bolt. So would have to have one of the other unholy heats. Right. Or, I mean, but like we said, we have an underworld breach. It looks like Justin has no more lands in hand. So it was not, even with the extra land drop afforded by the Dryad, was not oh, able to... Oh, had to play the Besage you. Yeah, w yeah, was not yeah, able yeah, yeah, to trigger yeah. um, God, and, and take things off the board. The thing is, Blair has had a bunch of paperweights in play too with the Ragavan being unable to attack and then Ledger Shredder's not getting in either. So... Um, Again, I think we're really after this combo line, but we have to find the grinding station. And it looks like Blair's decided that it's time It's time to go. I mean, I think probably going to to either kill the... I mean, what do you even... What, which one do you target, do you think? Uh, I think you actually have to get the Dryad off the mm. board. Um or okay. just hope your opponent doesn't draw any lands, but I think I'm more inclined to go for the Dryad, oddly enough. Blair discarding a land. To the Ledger Shredder. To the Ledger Shredder. Which means we have Underworld Breach and something? So Breach is in play, three cards oh, sorry, in Breach hand. Is in play now. Yeah, we have not been Jeez. able to see what Blair sorry. has drawn, but I did not see a grinding station go to the yard earlier. So um, there are. There's not great ways to cycle your mana in this version of the deck. Some some versions of the deck, well, actually only my version of the deck plays <laughs> Mana Morphos, <laughs> which lets you kind of like look through your deck a little right. bit farther, 
without losing mana, essentially. But Blair doesn't really have any ways to kind of like move through the deck besides things like Ether Spell Bomb, which sure. are not very efficient ways to continue the. Well, and no double drawing. amber also means no plus mana. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did see this line a few turns ago, and now we're seeing it come to fruition. Yeah, and uh, Choose your cards carefully. importantly, too, unable to cast Unholy Heat multiple times because of the lands in play. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, we could have. So, we tapped differently. Yeah. Yeah. So, actually, Blair may be missing, yeah, that we, we could have tapped the Mox Amber for red. So... Oh, but maybe also wanting to try to dig further. Oh, sure. All That'll right, work. We, we found a man. That'll we work found a too. Yeah. Yep. But you got to make sure. The thing is, you need to maintain delirium. Yeah. You got to leave the aether spell bomb. I think you maybe keep a ball. You have an emery, so like I know that you emery spell bomb is very good, but emery bobble might be better right now. So I don't know if you can keep delirium with the unholy heat then, because. Six cards in yard, you need to exile three of them. So you can't actually, so. No, I think, I think we, oh, because you have to exile. No, from. you you need to exile three cards. So, but Saga does count for two types. So, so that will not take out. So we actually need to correct that. Sure, I got it. That does not take out the Dryad because it loses Delirium when it's cast. And that's that's the danger is you really do get. You, I th actually thought we were gonna see maybe an attack from Blair to try and bait out a block on the Ragavan um, from the Dryad, because I was I was thinking maybe Blair felt like we could get the Ragavan in the yard if yeah. if uh, Justin didn't block with the Arboreal Grazer and wasn't feeling super heads up about that. But this does make this line a, feel a lot more awkward for for Blair. Well, I think just uh, like like maybe should have sequenced those in a different order, right? Like maybe not targeted the Titan with the first one, or maybe should have attacked and like used your le your ledger shredder for the drum. I think I think the answer was just never playing the Springleaf drum and instead making sure that we used the Mox Amber for red earlier. Oh sure sure. Um, yeah, keeping or sure. casting the Springleaf drum at the end of the chain where having Delirium or not doesn't matter. But again, this this deck is incredibly complex. Um, so Every hard. time I've played it, I make a ton of play mistakes and end up doing much worse. But the deck is so powerful, it can bail you out um, of even some uh, minor play mistakes. Also, just, Justin still only has one card in hand. So Yeah, and, <laughs> like, and Blair's been playing incredibly tight lines. The, the yeah. thing is that Blair will be pretty depleted after this turn. So the, the yard is depleted, and Blair's board is not like a winning board at the moment. Uh, yeah, we have two bobble triggers, though. Um, also, I, Justin, I mean, obviously, Justin having a Titan here is very good. Uh, Justin having another Summoner's Pack is very good. Yeah. Uh, that is a lot of Valakut triggers. Yeah, I think that this resolving is probably game. Um, again, unless... Yeah, Blair yeah. can pick something up. I mean, this is that's a tough position to be in for Blair. You have to wipe the board there, I think. And even then, it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, not finding grinding station earlier in the game. Having to spend a bunch of resources to not actually win the game is always tough for uh, for value engines like that, right? Right. Uh, are you, these are your decks. What are we? What are we sideboarding in? <laughs> so I mean, I think Justin's uh, Justin signing bog, in every, sure. every yeah bog every copy of Force of Vigor that's available. Oh, we should close. Um, yeah, Justin's bringing every copy of Force of Vigor. Engineered explosives is good. It looks like there's a Foundation Breaker maybe available in the board. I could see that coming in. Um, blasting blast zone. 
think that was in the sideboard? Or was that in the main deck? Uh, I missed it. But that I, might have I been in there. the board. I think that's a reasonable inclusion. You're boarding in every copy. You have a Boseju if you're on Justin's side. Um, the nice thing about Titan is you don't actually have to make your deck... Oh, you're boarding in Relic. You don't have to make your deck too terribly... Um, like diffuse mm. to be able to combat what Blair is doing. You True. always have the ability to play a Titan, get a bounce land and a Boseju, and if you have an amulet in play, then that's a way to deal with what Blair is doing. Sure, Blair's yeah, that's just doing. gas, yeah. Um, Azwupine, thank you very much for the subscription. Sup, sup. We really appreciate that. Uh, for Blair's side, um, Wear Terror is a big benefit of being in Jeskai colors. Sure. So I imagine we're going to see some number of wear tears. Uh, I think Teferi is a reasonable inclusion because Force of Vigor can be such a blowout. So if you okay. are trying to go faster and combo, which I think is usually the right choice, I think it's tough to yeah. win this matchup but with the fair plan on Feels Breach. like you are... You are too heavily built around the combo to try and play the control deck post board. Yeah, especially in this this matchup because you're not really like, you, you, Amulet Titan is so far over the top playing to the board that it's not like you can kind of stumble right Amulet and still be in a good spot when it comes to that. Right. Um, I I found the matchup to be very close. Um, and very skill testing. But also, I don't know. Maybe you just, uh, you know, all gas, no brakes, jam in everything very hard, and uh, your opponent doesn't have it. Yeah. I tend to like uh, the Amulet Titan side of the matchup a little bit better. Um, I think Titan just... Is, is, again, like I said, able to disrupt what Breach is doing mm. a lot more easily. Like playing one It's a lot of pieces of, to the Breach. Yeah, combo. one copy yeah. of Bajuka Bog, which is not that big of an imposition. Relic of Progenitus that you can just get off of Saga. Sure. Um, Force of Vigor is just such a like easy card to play and have another green card for in hand with Amulet Titan. Yeah, it, it feels like... Or hard Blair cast. has a hard, a harder time answering the pieces of Titan as well, right? Agreed. And but also and has answer, Mockingbird, answering right? Answering those pieces is predicated on Blair having a yard because right. Unholy Heat is your answer a lot of the time. I mean, Ether Spellbomb is a, is an okay speed bump, but. I think if I was in Blair's seat, I would be, I would be mulliganing pretty aggressively for a, a hand that I thought could had some gas to it. I would be going for the go fast hand as well. Yeah. The thing that's always a bit um, iffy is a lot of times you're thinking like I want a fast hand, and if it has Ragavan, awesome. Um, mm. But if your opponent leads on, especially Arboreal this Grazer, version, right? that was that whole match, yep. basically, yeah. In, in the versions of Breach recently, which play on Holy Heat instead of Lightning Bolt, because there was a time when it played Bolt, um, you can't get the Grazer off the board and get that swing in the next turn sure. with the Ragavan. Um, so Ragavan is, is, is just like either very good or does absolutely nothing, <laughs> yeah. depending on whether the Sloth is around. There's something uh, beautifully ironic, though, about a sloth beating a hasty monkey. That seems like the right... Like, I, that is very yeah. interesting. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not even beating it. It just kind of like grabs its arm. It's just in the just, way. Yeah. And the monk's like, ah, I can't get around yeah, this. I don't know what's going too, on. too fast or something like <laughs> that. You know, was, we, both hang, we were both hanging out in the trees and just, you know, I couldn't get by it. All right, two going back. Oh, Titan fans in the chat. I think I got a, I got a, you know, got a root for breach on the mold of five. That's a tough place to be. Yeah, but it's just like and to tie it up to Mox Amber. Oh, wow! Oh. Leading, leading on Saga is well uh, something that you see far more often from the Titan deck than. But the, also, I mean, obviously, trying to tutor for either, I mean, tutor for Aether Spellbomb to answer the threat that's going to be there, or just maybe for Mox Amber. 
to net Yeah, him. Mox Hammer seems okay. Tutoring for Aether Spellbomb is rig. rough because you're on a mold of five, and this yeah. deck is not one of those combo decks that can... Like, it, it needs card... It needs an amount of cards. Like, you, you can't just go off with no cards. So here we get to see... It's either, well, it's either... It's got to be either Mox Amber or Bobble, right? So Springleaf Drum, I think, oh, is Oh, Springleaf Drum isn't bad. Um, I don't think you're getting there on the beatdown plan uh, with Ledger Shredder, and yeah. you're losing the Saga here. Um, I have liked Springleaf Drum as a stopgap in the past, um, but I guess if you really need to combo and you don't have... Because the thing is, you don't need Mox Amber for the combo until later. You sure. can do it with Bobble initially, and then you get get through your deck until you can start recurring sure, until you the find amber. the Mox Ambers, yeah. And then you only need to add two blue before you get all the way through your deck. Yeah. So uh, Amber is especially on a board like this where it's not tapping for any mana. I like Blair going for the Bobble. We also, I think there is a Breach in hand, so... Wow, if we grind the bobble here, that is like a very clear indicator that we are okay. I don't think there's any reason to do it at this exact moment. You want to play around the bog, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it does that. The other thing is you you are playing a little bit around Justin getting a little crazy and like force of vigoring both the breach and the mm, bobble. Sure. But I don't think Justin would do that. So um I don't think there's any reason to get too antsy on that i do know that blair does have the underworld breach in hand but um so if we untap we're we're live to go and there's no force of vigor i like you would need you need one more mana source because you need to be able to cast uh, emery sure um out of the yard and then i think you're correct that you are live to go uh, i i oftentimes don't do the combo with this few resources like, just a single card in the yard is a little bit sketchy. Um, but I think this version, because Emery refills the yard and then one card, I think you can do it with uh, with very little cards in the yard. <laughs> I mean, is it is Justin in a spot where if he can... <laughs> But you could bog one card out of the graveyard. Is that going to make a difference? I'm not sure. I haven't. I I am actually. I'm not that great at doing the exact math for this deck, so uh, I don't know. Chat, if you know, if you can do the math better than we can, which is not very hard to do, <laughs> you should let us know if that math is right. If if getting rid of one card in the graveyard makes a difference, also takes himself off of Besaju now, right? Oh, he gets one. Yeah, he takes himself off of Besaju. Well, we have two land drops still, right? Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. So we should be able to, as long as Besaju is not one of the land drops. I'm just surprised we haven't There's run out amulet. the amulet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what is the red card at the end? Do you know what that? Mm. Oh, maybe it's just the land actually. Wow, Justin is playing this so slow. Why? So. Oh, he doesn't want to play the amulet because he doesn't want to give the connive trigger to the shredder. Maybe. Uh, could be. And he he will have a titan next turn. I guess okay. maybe that is it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Trying to avoid the. I mean, connive is very yeah. powerful and fill like we like you said at the start, right? The ability to fill your yard on connive was a huge okay. upgrade for the deck. This should be it. Um, I believe this will be good enough to combo off if Justin does not have uh, the requisite interaction, which as long as that's there's no force of vigor, I think Blair is uh, clear for takeoff. I feel like... Uh, do I have the power to make emoji requests for chat? Uh, yeah. I feel like a grinding station emoji would be good. Mm. Like, like I feel like that is applicable to many situations of magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blair yeah. also acknowledging how, how hard the math is. Yeah, Blackstar Boseju <laughs> is in hand, I believe. 
Um, but not live because uh, Justin does not have a legendary creature in play. Yeah. That will cost reduce it. So it should still cost one and a green. Although there was a line with Vesuva in hand, I believe there was a line as it would trigger Ledger Shredder, but I believe there was a line where he could have played Amulet, then played Vesuva copying um, copying a Gruul turf, and then untapped the turf, had Besaju live, and return another land to hand. So I think that this is going to punish um, this yeah, is going to punish it's Justin. Be bad. So this is where we're gonna start seeing Blair dig for the Emery. It's awkward though because Emery only costs Oh, there it is. Okay, Emery's in hand. Okay. okay. This, the reason why this was going to be awkward is if Emery wasn't in hand there, you can't have the bobble in play and, and also cast, cast, Emery, cast the Emery because you don't have enough cards in the yeah. yard. Yeah. Yeah, and we hit an amber. <laughs> this well, is this is it. This the is it. The combo <laughs> is assembled as long as yeah. uh, Justin uh, doesn't but Blair have is anything. Blair's just triple checking not to mess it up, which is totally fair cuz I've messed it up like four times already, including what the deck actually was at the beginning. So with the grinding station, this is actually important. With the grinding station trigger on the stack, Blair should be grinding. Oh, we missed a Amber. grind on the bobble. Okay, there's one blue floating. So this should be fine now. I think you're right, T Taco Bolas. <laughs> uh, it's got that's got to be game over. Yeah, there's yeah, Thassa's yeah. Oracle. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, we did it. We did it. So having Emery in hand was actually pretty clutch there. Yeah, that was um, essential. But I don't think it was going to be cards in the yard. Well, cards in the yard were going to be a partial issue, but so, you know, alternatively, mana could have made up for that. Sure. If we had one more blue to be able to cast Emery with only a single artifact in play. Yeah. We just had to make sure we exiled the right cards, which is exactly what we did. Uh, not often that you uh, see a Titan player not running out amulets, but... It was a little. It was a little weird. Yeah, without. I mean, just not leaving up the interaction. I think sometimes when you haven't seen this Jeskai breach deck take off, you it it doesn't look very threatening. Like, and so yeah. you can kind of get lulled into this false sense of security where you're like, well, they don't even have any of their pieces out yet. I don't see an Emery. I don't see an Amber. Yeah, the well, the board was you know. what. Uh, grinding shred shredder station. grinding station bobble yeah that's like lands. yeah it's like what are you doing with that but apparently winning the game <laughs> right so the board can look mopey but you can take you can just absolutely take off and win um if you have the right pieces in hand and in yard yeah i think also uh i can't remember if justin had the amulet to begin with but do you think respecting ragavan is important I like the keep on Justin's side. Okay. My only my only criticism was making sure to keep Poseju up, just running mm. out the amulet, um, and making sure that we always had had Poseju up. Yeah. Uh, see Saga Valakit. If there's a green source in there, that hand looks not terrible. Some grazers. Uh. I think maybe Castle Garenbrig might be the only green source, which would ETB tapped, but that can still, <laughs> that's fine against a Ragavan start. Yeah. Uh, because you're on the play. You're here. on the play. Well, yeah, as long as you don't leave with the Saga and get greedy. All right, we didn't leave with the Saga. All yeah. Right. So I, I actually it. do like this keep. Um, it is a slow hand, and there's no bounce lands, but there's a Force of Vigor in hand. I think you only really need to run out one of the Grazers. You can probably just hold the other one in hand. Yeah. Um, or I guess maybe if you're, oh yeah, if you're in a situation where you want to, oh, because you want to, now you need you need the green mana for Besaju. Right. You can also, I mean, you'd be able to hard cast Force of Vigor anyway for its mana cost next turn. So you don't necessarily have to do that, but I just don't think you need two Grazers on board. So yeah, um, I think being able to cast it for free is is like, could could come in pretty clutch here. My favorite fish friend. Pretty strong start Whew. from Blair. Um, 
already established delirium. Yeah, delirium on the first one, um, on the first mill. Blair has been very good about drawing off their bobbles. Excellent. Yeah. Which is not always an easy thing to do. In no, water. not at all. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, Kess Kessel Garenberg is two green to activate. Is that right? Correct. Oh, okay. All right. Two green, four colorless, adds six actual green pips that can only be used to cast, cast creatures. Yeah. Seems mediocre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and now I f I'm feeling, uh, unless there's a force of vigor, which I can't tell if there is in Justin's hand or not. Uh, we've got a bobble engine online. Uh, we're starting to make some pretty big headway as the breach deck. There definitely is a force of vigor in hand. Oh, is there? Um, well. You're hard pressed to activate to like force a figure anything at the moment. Like Saga is a juicy target, but unless you see something like an actual breach come out, this is the thing is like Justin has the interaction for the combo, but Blair is not being pressured enough to go for that at right. the moment. Yeah. Um, and force a vigor you're losing a lot of value by just taking out the Saga and then, like, you know, Aether Spellbomb's going to sure. be sacked to draw a card. Bobble can be sacked to draw a card. There's not really, like, two awesome targets. Yeah. I missed what player discarded, but it must have been a land. So we'll have two upkeep triggers of Bobble. I think that Ledger Shredder will definitely be outclass, or will definitely outclass this. Uh, the construct tokens. The construct. Yeah, the amulet construct tokens don't tend to be that uh, scary. Okay, this is interesting. Going for a second construct uh, and like leaving up a green card to pitch to force a vigor, in hopes of creating a clock. I I think this is the right choice. Um, Again, I, I don't think the Arboreal Grazer is doing anything played to the board. Yeah, There's yeah, an yeah. extra Grazer in hand, so I'm very much fine with this. And we it looks like we have a dice to indicate that there are three threes and two of them. Correct, yeah. To indicate that there are two. Uh, Captain Obvious over here. <laughs> I mean, that is, well, it's important. Those could have been plus one, plus one counters, yeah, and yeah. things would have gotten very confusing. Right. Um... I guess it also, maybe it's a little awkward for Blair about like when you're going to crack your baubles because you also want to have a construct that can block and trade. I don't know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, although, uh, we've yeah, got, you, I think we probably got heat do want to try well. and get some. Yeah, man. A Emery. Emery with a ledger shredder out. So good. It's such really good. a it's grindy really engine. Yep. And again, you know, Justin needs to find a payoff here. Uh, because just holding up Force of Vigor every turn is not gonna nope. it's not gonna do enough. You actually need to win the game, believe it or not. It's not enough to just disrupt your opponent. Uh if I'm Blair, I think, oh, the, <laughs> the Grazer has Reach as well. That's so annoying. Uh, I, I, think, I don't think you want to be getting in, really, if you're Blair yet anyway. I think you just want to make sure you're not dying to Constructs. Mm. Um, oh. All that's right. That's very Seems good. fine. That's Do you very, think that Justin's going to make a play of Vengeance and just, like, fire off the Force of Vigor? Just. I think I think <laughs> if Justin does fire off the Force of Vigor, that's indicative that that they're losing kind of focus on what's important sure. in the game. Sure, sure. Um, 
but I could see it out of first. Although a Simic Growth Chamber off the top is a good rip. I mean, that is definitely a strong, a strong draw. And getting the wear tear out of the hand when we have two dryad, uh, two dryads in hand is also nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, yeah, maybe Blair feeling very in control of the game right now. I actually think both players feel like somewhat in control of this <laughs> game, which is which yeah, is neither what of them makes feel it behind. It yeah, this is good magic, I guess. But I also think they're both smart enough to realize that it, it it's like kind of on a knife's edge as well. Ooh, draw. All right. And I think that that the draw here indicates that Blair is maybe feeling like a little bit of pressure to kind of accelerate into into a win here. Um, given B Blair is aware that Castle Garenbrig was the return to Justin's hands, so Titan is on the horizon for next right. turn. I don't think Justin has the Titan in hand, but um, but yeah, good you're, to forecast you're, it. You're pretty as you much would. always thinking that your opponent does have a Titan in hand. Yeah, after you go past turn four, right? Like mm -hmm. given, I mean, they have they have eight eight ways to get it between right. Titans and Summoners Pacts. And I think it's usually a safe assumption on a lot of amulet keeps. So is there a reason to get Springleaf Drum here over Mox Amber when you have Emery in play already? Springleaf Drum, you're getting better. Oh, so that would be it. But Amber. yeah, <laughs> um, that's kind of what I was going to say is like you're getting better overall value from it. It can also add a red right now, sure. which uh, may be relevant. Okay, so if we're playing the breach here, I have to imagine that we have the win. Um, Justin is Justin is trying to real <laughs> to to figure out. Okay, when is the moment? Yeah, we're gonna run out. Oh, interestingly, he could have done it in response to the connive trigger. Yes, which would have been interesting. But I do think you wait until Blair starts to, like, you want Blair to Go commit some mana here. Yeah. Like if if Blair plays, if for example Blair uses mana on the grinding station, that card's pretty useless without a breach. Blue mana from a Springleaf Drum to cast, just like cast it something ridiculous. I like Justin's patience here a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, sure. I still like Justin's. I I think so. Like we were saying with Blair drawing last turn. I still don't want to see the Force of Vigor yet, but it looks like we are gonna we are gonna run it out. Yeah, Springleaf Drum is a better hit. I just I I think you can get you can get hurt by this. Blair has a lot of again. Because we've not forced Blair to play the grinding station, there's a Is lot of mana available. So we can either clear the board with Unholy Heat. Sure. Um, we can Wear Terror. Uh, I guess it's just the Constructs. It's not devastating, but I, I think I just would have liked good. to have seen us wait just a touch longer. But I love, I've loved this game Is so that far. Even, is that even worth it to kill a Construct token? Like, yeah, I think you, you need few enough resources. Like, the graveyard is really stocked right now. Okay. You also have another Emery trigger that's about to hit the stack, which will put four more cards in it. Because I believe that Justin Force of Vigor in response to the new Emery trigger. Uh, oh, you're new right. new Emery right, casting, I, I thought. Uh, I think it was... Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, Justin exiled the other Arboreal Grazer that he did not play. Right. Uh, which was a great play. Yes. Recognizing that we do not need another zero three on the board. Yep, and that was that was recognized all the way from turn one. Yeah, um, yeah, literally. Yo, turn two after he played the first arboreal grazer. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Had both grazers in hand at the beginning of the game, so really, really heads up. Uh, we also saw Blair dump another breach into the yard, so possibly only two left in the deck. And again, I do not think you're getting there if you're not playing on a breach line. 
So we may see Justin's patience. So like I was saying last game where Justin got a little bit greedy and did not hold right. up a card that would disrupt the combo, Justin has played this game incredibly safe and slow. And I think that is, if we see Justin win, it will be by virtue of that. Yeah. Well, I think it will actually be by virtue of him top, de top decking really great cards, which is what Magic is about, because he's out of cards. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, really heads up to hold up the fetch land here. Yes. Justin has kept the fetch land up, um, and it taps for mana with Dryad of the Elysian Grove yeah. and represents... A cup, or at least one Valica trigger. Right. Yeah. If we can get another land. So. Yeah, that is that is a very heads up play. Kind of, I mean, honestly, kind of a master class going on. I think from both sides, a really, really fun match to watch. Do you? Try it is what a, a two four. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Wait, uh, did Blair just find another breach? Yeah. Well, Brutal. played one, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, I must have found it off the iteration. Or or maybe had, yeah. So okay, that's... Access to two mana. I mean, if we can find the grinding station, that's game. Oh, no, there's one in the yard, right? So we can just... There was, there yeah, was we can one Emery, the and there's another Mox Amber in the yard, I think. Then, yeah, I mean, that's good enough. Yeah, I, think I mean, that's that's easy. Yeah, yeah, that's easy mode at this point. So, wow. Yeah, the expressive iteration is a heck of a card. Yeah, and uh, Blair definitely kept kept enough fodder in the yard to, to have no problem going off again yeah. once we found the breach. But, again, it was so contingent upon finding that yeah, breach. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think, like, a ver very, very good game played by both sides of the table.